solemn vespers once a month and uh, normally on Saturday nights but sometimes on Friday and sometimes on Sunday. Uh, vespers lasts about 45 minutes normally. It begins normally at uh, evening hour 5.15 on weekends a little later on Friday. Um, what's interesting too is that each liturgy, the, the actual text, the actual music we sing depends on the liturgical celebration. So next month we'll be celebrating Sacred Heart and the music and the text of the music is uh, on the theme of the Sacred Heart. The month after that in July we'll be celebrating the feast day of St. Benedict, our patron saint. And so the, the music is all about St. Benedict. And then in August we celebrate the Transfiguration on August 6th. And that will have uh, a whole different set of pieces. And so uh, that's another interesting thing, is that the music is composed for specific feast days of the year. And these change depending on the season, Advent, Christmas, Lent, Easter, and so on. And also then for the feast days of the saints. And so uh, there's a tremendous variety in the music if one is able to be aware of it. And a number of people I knew from the world would come to the monastery and ask if they could sing uh, the music that we had worked on before, but sing it in the liturgy. So there is quite a lot of music from the 16th century, uh, which was written for Catholic liturgy, which is rarely done at Catholic liturgy today. And if it's done at all, it's done in concerts. And it doesn't really work as concert music because it's meant to go with the liturgy. And so when these friends of mine approached the monastery and asked if they could sing the music here, um, again, at first I was not the superior, but the, the superior of the monastery said yes. And so we started a little choir here at the monastery and they would sing at mass once a month or so. And uh, the problem was eventually I became the superior and I couldn't sing with the group anymore <laughs> because I was the tenor in the group. And I kind of directed the group too. And uh, once I couldn't do that anymore, we either had to stop with the group or we had to come up with a different solution. And so one of the brothers suggested that we contact Kevin Allen, who was a friend of ours for a long time, and he's a well-known musician in Chicago at Sacred Music. And so we approached him and um, he was very excited about the project and he was able to put together a choir of about 20 voices. And we decided to have the group sing at Vespers rather than at Mass, and there are several reasons for this. One is that uh, one of the recommendations of Vatican II, which people aren't aware of, is that in every diocese there should be Vespers on Sunday night, uh, publicly celebrated where the faithful can gather. Uh, this tradition has fallen out of use for the most part in the Catholic Church. There's a lot of music written for this, uh, so that composers like Palestrina, for instance, wrote 30 or more settings of the Magnificat, which is sung every night at Vespers. And um, again, this music simply wasn't being performed, and uh, not many Catholics go to Vespers. So we thought this was a contribution we could make to the local church by helping more Catholics and other Christians to become aware of the beauty of this music, the, the joy of singing Vespers, and it's a wonderful time of day. Um, and uh, then just to resurrect this music, some of the music that the choir sings hasn't been sung in 400 years. You know, uh, musicologists study it, they, they edit the music, but nobody sings it. There's too much of it <laughs> to, to sing in concerts. So, uh, so it's very exciting to discover this music and then to actually perform it, uh, and not just for our own glory, but for the glory of God. And um, you know, my hope is that we would be able to reach out to a lot of people, uh, not just Catholics, but to really bring people together who are just drawn to the beautiful music, 
We have a beautiful, beautiful church, a great acoustic, and uh, you never know how the, the Lord will move the hearts of people who come just to hear the music. And uh, uh, certainly, actually, the, the other personal thing I can say about that is uh, when I got to college, I was still kind of practicing my faith, but not very regularly. And when I heard this music for the first time, I couldn't believe how beautiful it was. And I wanted to find out what kind of culture produces music like this music. And uh, it was Catholic music. So uh, this got me thinking about Catholic spirituality again. And this was part of my conversion to monastic life, uh, just realizing that the, the understanding of the world, the understanding of beauty that we have as Catholics is, uh, is very life-giving and uh, it really touches the heart in a very direct way. Uh, it, 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 there's a lot of intellectual content too, there's a lot of uh, uh, theology to this music, uh, but you don't need to know that. <laughs> you, can simply, you can simply enjoy it as music. And it is, it is so elegant, so beautiful, so balanced, uh, that it really speaks of God who has created the world in a rational and beautiful way. And so it's just a, a wonderful privilege to be able to provide a place for this music to be sung.